Hello, today we are going to start a new chapter dielectrics and ferroelectrics. So first of all we will be discussing about the effect of electric field applied on a crystal. There are uh, two kinds of electric fields in a material. We can talk about uh, two electric fields in a material. One is the macroscopic field and the other one is local electric field. In Maxwell's equation and all, the electric field we are talking about is the macroscopic electric field. So, for example, in uh, Maxwell equation, here the electric field E rho is the uh, charge density, epsilon zero is the permittivity of free space. In this electric field is the macroscopic electric field or the average electric field inside the material. And there is local electric field. So there is first one is macroscopic electric field. And there are local electric field. Local electric field means electric field at a at a particular atom, at the site of particular atom or atomic site. A macroscopic field is more uh, smoother because it is average average, it is an average field. So we are integrating our a particular volume and we take the average okay so that is macroscopic field local electric field is not that smooth like uh, macroscopic field okay. so at, in an atom there is a particular electric field that is called the local electric field if we average over a particular region then the total net electric field average electric field is called a macroscopic field both are electric field but there is some difference between macroscope and macroscopic and local electric field so let us first to discuss the macroscopic field okay the first contribution is first one first uh, contribution to the macroscopic field is the applied electric field applied field or the field due to external charges for example so let us consider a material this is a material hmm? it is placed between two charged plates so here uh, this is plus charge plate and this is negative charge plate okay for example and this field due to this uh, charge plates is or the external field this is external field E0 which is directed from plus to so this is the direction of electric field from plus charge to uh, negative charge okay and uh, there will be field inside this material and inside the material there are two kinds of field one is microscopic field or microscopic field and a local field at a particular atom atomic site okay. so first uh, we are talking about macroscopic field the first contribution to the macroscopic field is the applied field e0 okay and uh, so this is due to the external charges whatever if we are applying uh, if we are having a lot of charges outside due to this charge there will be a field inside as well and the other contribution to the macroscopic field is the field due to all charges inside okay so the applied field is due to the charges outside the material and the next contribution to the macroscopic field is the field due to all other charges inside the material okay if the charges if the material is neutral because most of the atoms are neutral therefore the material itself will be neutral in many cases so in that case electric field inside is actually the electric field due to the dipoles in the material even if the materials material is neutral there will be dipoles okay permanent or other dipoles also so due to, field due to the dipoles is the field uh, the next contribution or the field due to dipoles okay so we know we have to see what is uh, the electric field due to dipoles so the electric field due to dipoles is given by you know a dipole okay at any uh, at a particular uh, position the electric field due to a single dipole at any po point is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 3 p dot r r r is the position vector p dot r minus r square p divided by r raised to 5 
okay so this is the electrophility due to a dipole at any position okay. so at any point p so this is the point p and uh, dipole is is the dipole direction from minus to plus uh, minus charge to plus charge and the electric field at this position so this is the position vector r and this angle t this is the angle theta okay so the electric field p dot r the electric field is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 3 times p dot r p is the direct this is the direction of the dipole moment and uh, this is the direction of the position vector p dot r p r cos theta minus r square into p magnitude of dipole moment sorry dipole moment vector divided by r raised to 5 this is the electric field due to a dipole the total electric field is the sum over all the dipoles okay sum of electric field at any point is the sum of all dipoles similarly we have to calculate the electric field due to all the dipoles in in a material in the above uh, above example okay so let me put the this electric field the electric field due to all the dipoles is actually the electric field due to uh, fictitious surface charge density so let me draw the figure once more here when an external field is applied e0 is applied here then there will be polarization so there will be dipoles if the dipoles are parallel if the dipoles are parallel then here negative charge will be there here positive here negative positive negative positive like that okay so this side of the material will have negative charge and this side this end of the material will have positive charge okay so there will be a fictitious surface charge density fictitious means uh, virtual fictitious surface charge charge density sigma okay sigma is given by if p is the uniform polarization sigma is equal to p dot n from electrostatics p dot n is a surface charge density okay where n is the normal vector here this is the uh, normal uh, vector and p is directed from the polarization vector p is given by uh, in this direction from minus charge to see what is polarization actually polarization p is the total dipole moment per unit volume okay p divided by net p divided by v okay if we add all the dipole moments uh, the vector sum of all the dipole moments and divide uh, with uh, the volume you will get the polarization vector p so which is directed from negative charges to positive charge so the direction of p is in this direction therefore the sigma is equal to p dot n so therefore in this side in this side there will be minus p in this side we will have plus p okay so, uh, the, this is the sigma is equal to here the sigma is minus p here sigma is plus p okay so actually this is a phase mm -hmm. this surface will have negative charges and the surface charge density is minus p here the surface charge density is plus p therefore the electric field due to the uh, dipoles inside the material is equivalent to or is equal to the dipole due to this fit, uh, sorry the electric field due to this surface charge densities okay if uh, it for a slab for example for a thin slab this field this field let us let us uh, call this as e1 e1 is equal to we know the electric field between two charge plates is uh, this is between the inside the material is sigma by epsilon 0 okay which is equal to so actually this is sigma by epsilon 0 
modulus of sigma by epsilon 0. This field is uh, directed opposite to the applied field because this applied field is uh, in this direction along this direction but the field due to the polarization is from positive charge to negative charge. So this is negative so we have to put a negative symbol here negative uh, modulus of sigma divided by epsilon 0 that we this is minus p by epsilon 0 okay e1 so for a slab this is equal to p by epsilon 0 okay the total field therefore the total macroscopic field field e is equal to e0 plus e1 okay this field because since this field is uh, opposite to the applied field this field is called e1 is called depolarization field depolarization field if the specimen is in the shape of uh, an ellipsoid okay three dimensional shape if a uh, external field is applied here okay, so this is the field e0 and there will be uh, surface charges on this side negative charges and this side it will be positive charges okay then we can have the depolarization field e1 e1 uh, has three components E1, uh, E1x is equal to minus nx into P, Px divided by epsilon 0, where Px is the component of uh, the polarization, and E1y is equal to minus ny Py by epsilon 0, E1z, z component of the electric field inside, that is a depolarization field is uh, minus n z p z by epsilon 0 where p x p y p z are components of polarization polarization vector okay so a uh, uniform polarization produces uniform depolarizing field here n x n y n z nx ny and nz are the depolarization factor factors with the, the total uh, nx plus ny plus and z is equal to 1 okay now the limiting forms of the ellipsoid are If the axes are uh, having same uh, dimension, then it is sphere. Then cylinder is there. Then uh, uh, disc. So these these are the limiting forms of uh, uh, ellipsoids. Uh, here, if the polarization is uniform, then the depolarization field also uniform. Then the uh, expression for the components of electric field is given like this e1x is equal to minus nx px divided by epsilon 0 similarly e1y e1z okay. so where here nx ny nz are the depolarization factor with uh, this uh, nx plus ny plus nz is equal to 1 so we can write the uh, different values of uh, n this depolarization factor for different shapes uh, ab axis about some axis uh, the value of n so these are the values now first one is sphere for sphere all the axes are uh, equivalent okay therefore any axis any axis the value of n is equal to 1 by 3 so n x equal to 1 by 3 n y equal to 1 by 3 n z also 1 by 3 Okay, the axis about this uh, axis through the center 
any axis through the center is equivalent. So the corresponding depolarization factor is 1 by 3. Next is slab, thin slab. Okay, a normal axis. Normal axis uh, to the plane of the slab. Okay, the value of n is 1. In the plane, if the axis is in the plane, in the plane it will be 0. Next is cylinder, long cylinder. A long cylinder, longitudinal, along the length of the cylinder. The value of n is equal to 0. Okay. For long specimen, depolarization factor along the uh, 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 longitudinal axis is equal to 0. Okay. For transverse axis, axis, the value of, there are two transverse axes for a cylinder, uh, x, y and z is the longitudinal axis then, uh, longitudinal, about longitudinal axis it is 0, therefore uh, transverse there are two planes, so 1 by 2 and 1 by 2, so 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 is 1. Hmm? These are the different values of nx, uh, ny, nz for different shapes. If the applied electric field is uniform, then the polarization in the specimen also uniform. Okay. That, therefore, we can write the polarization in the ellipsoid or polarization of the material P is equal to epsilon 0 chi into E. Here, epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space, chi is the dielectric susceptibility and E is the macroscopic electric field. Here, E is the macroscopic field and P is the polarization. So, polarization is directly proportional to the electric field. Now, uh, in terms of the applied electric field, we can write this equation. Macroscopic field E equal to E0 plus E1. E1 is the depolarization field. Can be written as E0 minus NP by epsilon 0. So this is the polarization field where n is the depolarization factor. So using this uh, expression, we can replace E from this. So therefore, this can be written as P divided by epsilon 0 chi is equal to E0 minus n P by epsilon 0. P is equal to epsilon 0 chi E0 minus chi n chi p okay. or in terms of p we can write p is equal to this p you bring this side for uh, epsilon 0 chi e 0 divided by 1 plus n chi so in terms of uh, the applied electric field this is the expression of the polarization Okay. Now let us see the local electric field. Local electric field. The local electric field is the electric field at, a, at an atomic site, uh, which is different from the macroscopic uh, field. So the local electric field is E local is equal to. For this, let us imagine a specimen. For this, let us imagine a material okay and an electric field is applied e0 in this direction and uh, there will be charges induced at this side there will be positive charge and this side there will be negative charges because of this sur surface charge densities there will be an electric field this is given this is called the depolarization field e1 which is opposite to uh, it is directed opposite to the uh, applied field E0 and let us imagine a spherical cavity, a spherical volume is cut out from this specimen with uh, the atom, the reference atom as the center. Okay. We want to find out the local electric field at this atomic site, okay. this site. For that we are imagining a spherical cavity cut out from the volume of the specimen. Then positive charges will be induced in this side of the inner surface of the cavity 
and negative charges will be in induced in this side. Okay, the no total local electric field is E zero plus E one plus the depolarization field. Then the field due to this surface charge inside this cavity. So that is the field E two. So this field E two is called the cavity field or Lorentz field. Lorentz and there are atoms inside or dipoles inside. So the field due to all these dipoles inside the cavity at this site. So that is E three, and this can be written as E zero plus and uh, the field due to all other dipoles. So we can write this thing as D E dipole. Inside the material is inside the specimen E dipole is equal to equal to E one plus E two plus E three. Okay. Here in the expression of uh, local electric field E zero is the external field or the applied field. Okay. Or and uh, E one is the depolarization field. Okay, due to the polarization, and uh, E two is the Lorentz cavity field for the surface charge. On the inner surface of the cavity. Okay, and uh, E three. Is the field due to the dipoles inside the cavity? Okay. We know what is E zero, what is E one. Now we want to calculate E two, the Lorentz cavity field or Lorentz field. To find out this, let us imagine a spherical cavity. Okay. Let us imagine a ring on this surface, spherical surface. Okay, and charges will be induced this surface plus charges and this and this surface it will be negative charges. Okay, induced charge, fictitious charge on the surface of the cavity. Let us imagine a, a ring about this diameter. Okay. Radius of the cavity is a. A is the radius of the cavity, and radius of this ring is if this is this angle is theta, and uh, then this will be a sine theta. If d theta is the angle subtended by the width of this strip or uh, this ring, then the width is given by is equal to. A d theta. Angle is going to arc by radius. Therefore, uh, the electric field E two one by four pi epsilon zero integral sigma d a divided by uh, here at this side our reference atom is the center of the uh, cavity. So therefore, a square where d a is the Small and uh, small area we have imagined. So this this area, this shaded region around this diameter, so that is a ring. So the ring, area of the ring is d a. Sigma is the charge density uh, on this sphere. Okay. So the sigma can be here. Sigma is equal to p dot n. Here p is directed downwards because it is with respect to the surface charge of the specimen this is the inner surface of the cavity but we have considered the specimen there is a surface charge on the specimen due to which uh, uh, the depolarization occurs that is the polarization p direction and uh, for inner surface this is the direction of this is the normal vector normal okay normal vector so the it is p dot n is equal to P cos theta and dA is equal to 
the a is equal to area of the area of this ring okay area means length into breadth so 2 pi a sin theta into thickness is sorry width is uh, a d theta which is equal to 2 pi a a square sin theta d theta d a we obtained and uh, this is the electric field so this electric field here it the electric field due to this charge will be directed this side diametrically uh, opposite element will have uh, electric field in this direction directed in this di direction therefore we can write uh, the we can resolve this thing into each one into sin theta and the cos theta components this also can be uh, resolved into sin theta and cos theta components so all the sin theta components get cancelled we can add, add all the cos theta components so, so this is here we have cos theta also so 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 sigma dA divided by a square into cos theta is the uh, electric field uh, direct electric field which is directed uh, downwards okay so this therefore we can write e2 is equal to we want to integrate over the entire surface we have to integrate from uh, theta equal to 0 to theta equal to pi therefore we can write this thing as p divided by 2 epsilon 0 integral integral cos square theta sin theta d theta from 0 to now we have to we can replace cos theta cos theta is equal to x then so therefore we can write e2 the lorentz cavity field equal to p by 3 epsilon 0 okay similarly we want to find out e3 uh, due to the dipoles inside the volume inside the cavity so that is given by if the cavity if uh, for a cubic environment for a cubic crystal cubic lattice of this here it is already spherical shape spherical shape the electric field due to all the dipoles is equal to what is that 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 summation so electric field due to a single dipole is if the dipoles are in z direction if p is in z direction and all the dipoles are parallel and are and are parallel to each other okay then the z component of this field e3z is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 summation 3 uh, P is anyway PZ okay that which is equal to P P dot R I P is PZ Z I okay so PZ is P okay P into Z I into this the component of this R I along Z axis is Z I so this is PZ I square minus R dot R is R i square into P divided by R i raised to 5. So, this is the z component of electric field. Okay. So, the 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 into P summation 3 z i square here i 
the raised square minus r i square divided by r i raised to 5. Okay. For a cubic environment, if the crystal is made of cubic lattice, this already the cavity is in spherical shape. Therefore, the summation x i square divided by r raised to 5 is equal to summation because for a spherical cavity the x y z are equivalent no? y i raised to y i square divided by r i raised to 5 is equal to summation z i square divided by r i raised to 5 therefore the above equation the z component of the field e3 is given by 1 by for epsilon 0 p into summation 3 z i square minus r i square here summation 3 z i square divided by r i raised to 5 is equal to summation x i square plus y i square plus z i square for a sphere huh? by r i raised to 5 therefore we can write this thing as uh, this is equal to summation r i raised to r i square divided by r i raised to 5 so this term get uh, two terms get cancelled therefore this is equal to 0 about e 3 is equal to 0 e 3 is equal to 0 for a for a spherical cavity with a a cubic arrangement of dipoles. Uh, the net electric field due to all the dipoles at the uh, center will be zero. Okay. So therefore, the E local local is equal to E zero plus E one plus P by three epsilon zero. Okay. So here E0, here E0 plus E1 is the log macroscopic field E plus P by 3 epsilon 0. So E local, this is called Lorentz relation. This is called Lorentz relation. So we have seen what is the macroscopic electric field inside a material and uh, what is the local electric field at an at atomic site in the material okay so the local electric field is different from macroscopic electric field it is, which is obvious from the lorentz relation e local is equal to macroscopic field plus p by 3 epsilon 0 that's all for today okay see you in the next class